YouTube starting. Yeah. Oh, they'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Once you take it on YouTube, they'll all be there. You'll see another price because of the notification. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's hope this goes well. <clears throat> Shalom, everyone, and welcome to our makeshift meeting. Um, <clears throat> we are broadcasting in the fields, currently celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, and we are live here. First time we are doing this together. And if you can see, where is it? That tree there in the background over there. That is a willow tree over there. The land of the uh, here with um the family here. Yeah. Show up. Oh yeah. This morning you and we saw all the most um, six Yes, yeah. Shalom, shalom. One and all, as we went into it. <clears throat> this morning, T into 14 and uh, building against the most time. That is a danger for us today as believers. When the most time speaks, we have to learn when he speaks. So that we are told in the same category of those people to whom the Lord has given in um, the description in the book. No, that is that in for us all right, and it reads, confounded the only that stand graven images. Is this connected? Yeah. Are we using your your phone? Huh? We're using yours. No. Check if we load it up again. Just check if it's connected. Um. Yes. 
Psalm 97 verse 7. Psalm 95 verse 7. This open up for me. Yeah, we let's make shift, right? Network this side is a bit. It's a bit difficult, but I'm sure by the end of it, we should be able to get through. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you all hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, we were having problems here in Budakaza. Yes. Um. Yeah. It's just network. Yeah. The number. Oh, I had you ready to tell me. Yeah. Should be the one that starts with H. All right. Yeah. Mm. All right, looking good now. Um, yeah, so we were at Psalm 9 to 5, verse 7. Let me get it on the screen. Go ahead. Psalm 95 or 7. For he is our Alua, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Okay. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your voice. Today means like right now. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And that is what we looked at today, Numbers 13 to 14. Continue. When your fathers had not your heart as in the day, as in the provocation, and as in the in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years and long. Just pull it up. Pull it up for me. Forty years long was I grieved for this generation and said. It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Okay, so the most I see is our disobedience. When he speaks and we do not respond, he sees it as provocation and temptation. And we are going to look at tempting Yahuwah further on. But he says... It is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. So his rest, we cannot enter into his rest if we tempt him. Yeah, I can't hear you. You see, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you mute your mic, not hearing you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Proverbs 28, 14. Proverbs 28, verse 14. Happy is the man that feareth holy, but he that had not his heart shall fall into mischief. Shall do what? Shall fall into mischief. He that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. That means when the Most High speaks and we do not respond, no good thing comes to us. And the children of Yasharal are known for their hard heartedness. I think we look at this the last time. Ezekiel 3, 4 to 7. Ezekiel 4 to 7. Stiff naked people. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Yasharal, and speak with my and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Yasharal. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely 
had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Mm -hmm. Seven. But the house of Yashara will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Yashara are impudent and hard-hearted. Our people are impudent and hard-hearted. And he just told us, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. As in the provocation. And we know the season that we are in. We are in the time of the end. If you are a believer watching this, and you do not believe that we are in the time of the end, then something is wrong. We are near the time of the end. We are in the season of the end. And in the end, he told us to flee out of the midst of Babylon. And there's a specific term that we're going to look at today. And that term is cut off. The most I use that term several times in scripture and in some dangerous places, implying some really serious action on his part. But, but because, because most of us do not fear Yahuwah, most, most of us ignore that call. Most of us ignore the call, the, 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 the warnings about being cut off. And even in the warning to flee Babylon, the most I warned us about being cut off. Let's see it in Jeremiah 51. Verse 6, read please. Jeremiah 51, 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Do not be not cut off in her iniquity. That term there, cut off. Let's look at the meaning of it. Um, okay, the term cut off is the Hebrew damam, which means to be dumb by implication, to be astonished, to stop, also to perish, to cease, to be cut down or to be cut off, to forbear, to hold peace, to quiet self, be silent, to keep silence, be, stand still, tarry, wait. So it means to perish, to be cut down. Yeah? So, do not, be not cut off in her Iniquity, for this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. Now, the scripture tells us about being cut off for certain things. So let's just look at a couple of them. A lot of them we often ignore. Numbers 9.13 And the most side is not... Um, does not spare that term cut off. There are certain things that he commands. If you do them, if you do not do them, he threatens to cut off, cut us off. Numbers 9, 13. You there? Yes. <laughs> but the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of Yahuwah in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. So the believer that is able to keep the Passover and refuses to keep it, says that soul shall be cut off. Let's show a little bit of, um, a little cut off to show how we, we do, do not, not know, know Yahuwah. What did it say in um, it's Psalm 95, 95, verse 10? Let's go back. Psalm 95, verse 10. Psalm 
Me not what's going to get in trouble. Read for in verse 10, please. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. They have not known my ways. So when he says, You shall be cut off, we just read over it and just. Mm. <laughs> I just continue reading. Oh, yeah. oh come on. Cut off. Oh. They have not known my ways. We don't know how serious the Most High is. So we get things like that and we just run them over. Um, numbers 15, numbers 15 29, to 29 to 31. Just looking at that cut off word here. <laughs> Read, please. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, for sinneth both for him that is born among the children of Yasharal, and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. There's a law for those who sin. Right, there's a law for those who sin in ignorance. But verse thirty: and the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, <laughs> whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth Yahuwah, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. What we see happening today is a whole lot of cut off we see going on. And many people cannot see it, but we can see it. So, if you sin presumptuously, if you know the most size commands, and you just barefaced reject his command. If you just barefaced reject his command, that is presumptuous sin. It says that soul, soul shall, shall be cut, cut off from among his people. For, For ex example, example, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. tabernacles. How, How many people keep the Feast of Tabernacles? How many people? How many people out there? actually keep the Feast of Tabernacles because we're going to look at the command for the Feast of Tabernacles and we're going to see what it says. It's another cut-off issue. We do not know the ways of the Most High. We must know His ways. And He says, That soul shall be cut off from among His people because verse 31 says, Because He hath despised the word of Yahuwah and hath broken His commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Ouch. This sounds hard. So if you are in a sin and you presumptuously do the sin, it says, you have not only despised his word, but you have also broken his commandment. And it says, that soul shall utterly be cut off. Totally cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. And then it's saying that you don't have anyone to be, to be blamed. Now, now, the, the Feast, Feast of Tabernacles that, that we are keeping right now, now how many people actually have kept, kept the feast? The feast? Yes. When, when we are here and, and, and we are talking, people, people think, think that we are hard. Because, because And the reason you think that we are hard is because you think Yahuwah is soft. We come hard because we know the Most High comes hard. And we are trying to help us all together to be in the same mind to in to be in accordance with yahuwah's will instead of in accordance with religion because religion usually trivializes yahuwah's word and try to present yahuwah as a softy so that their religion can thrive because when the word is harsh very few people want to listen but we present it hard because in reality it is hard. And, and so, so we, we have, have jubilees. I don't, I don't know. Let me look if I can see if I have jubilees here. Uh, book of Joshua. I need a book of jubilees. Mm. All right, coming up. Oh, this is interesting. I mean, Numbers 15, 31. It says, because he hath despised the word of Yahuwah and hath broken his commandment. Mm. Now, I don't know how many of us are really keeping this feast. 
All right, this is not an idea about legalism and all that. But it's for us to examine the word and to see if we are really in the faith. Because listen to what Yahuwah is saying. And if we remember what Yahuwah said, what does he say about who he is? He says, I'm not a man that I should what? I should lie. In other words, when Yahuwah sent forth his word, it shall not what? It shall not return to him void. That means that if Yahuwah says that soul shall be utterly cut off, what do you think? Do you think it's a joke? Do you think it's 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 a blabber or whatever whatever they call it? Do you think Yahuwah is plain? Do you think his word is going to change here? When we see these things, it's quite scary. And when it's scary, our first disposition is to first what is the first point to the to the messenger. We never seem to look at the one speaking. Who is Yahuwah? The messenger is just speaking the words. This is Yahuwah's word. It says, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. That means the blood of Yahusha will do nothing for this person. Wow. You see how hard this is? Because Yahusha did not die for transgressors. Who did he die for? What was his sacrifice for? Those who sin say that his sacrifice is in vain, and so it's not for them. And what is sin? Sin is a transgression of what? Of the very commandment Yahweh is speaking about here. So please, I hope we can pay attention to what is being spoken out here. The cut off word that is being emphasized. Zoom in onto the word cut off. Go check the dictionary definition of the word cut off. So the one day when your sin is being put on your head, you don't come back and say, but yeah, I didn't know, but, but your teachers or your messengers didn't speak about it. It is quite loud and it is very clear here. You break Yah's commandment, there is a what? There is a consequence to it. And because of love, guess what? It is being brought back to, your, to you, to your memory. You are being quickened to the consequences of this and why you ought to take every word of Yah serious. Shalom. Shalom. Right. Right. So, so let's, let's go, go to the, the book of Jubilees. Jubilees. We're, we're going to see the Feast of Tabernacles. And a feast that we take, we take his feast um, to be trivial. But we have to understand that it is not what we have been presented, it is what the word says. Verse um, 16, Jubilees. I don't know if you can read it, Shamu. 16. Yeah. This is the angel narrating. Go ahead. And we returned in the seventh month and found Sarah with child before us, and we blessed him. And we announced to him all the things which, which had been decreed concerning him, that he should not die till he should beget six sons more and should see them before he died. But that in Isaac should his name and seed be called. Continue. And that all the seed of his son should be Gentiles and be reckoned with the Gentiles. But from the sons of Yitzhak, one should become a holy seed and one should not be reckoned and one should not be reckoned among the Gentiles. For he, sh for he should become the portion of the Most High and all his seed had fallen into the possession of Alua that it should be unto Yahuwah a people for his possession above all nations and that it should become a kingdom and priest and a holy nation. Continue, right? Yeah. And we went our way and we announced to yeah. Sarah all that we, we had told him and they both rejoiced with exceeding great joy and he built there an altar to Yahuwah who had delivered him and who was making him rejoice in the land of his joining. And he celebrated a festival of joy in this month, seven days, near the altar which he had built at the well of oath of the oath. Mm -hmm. 21. 21. And he built booth 
for himself and for his servants on this festival. And he was the first to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles on the earth. All right. Yeah. Go to 27 now. 27. <laughs> and he blessed and rejoiced, and he called the name of his festival, the festival of Yahuwah, a joy acceptable to the Most High, Alua. A joy acceptable to the Most High. So when you don't keep this festival, you're rubbing the Most High of his joy. 28. And we blessed him forever, and all his seed after him throughout all, gen all the generations of the earth, because he celebrated this festival in its season, according to the testimony of the heavenly tablets. All right, so we've barak him forever, and all his seeds after him throughout all the generations of the earth, because he celebrated this festival in its season. Isn't that profound? Very, very profound. Yeah. Now, the interesting part is, to me, is that this feast is a testimony recorded on the heavenly tablets. Heavenly tablets. Now, <laughs> I don't know if we still remember I don't know if that the word remember. prayer, the one Yahushua yeah, taught his um, followers, his disciples, it says what? And let your will be done where? And let your will be done where? On earth, earth as it is in, earth, as it is in, in Shamaim, in so, heaven. I have a question have for those question that are listening who are not keeping the tabernacles and profess, and profess to be believers. To believe now, to now, enter into the kingdom, kingdom, you've got, got to be to doing this will. will. What is his will? will. Hmm. To keep to his keep commandments. His commandments. <clears throat> so, if so if you're not keeping his commandments here on earth, don't you think it's also bearing record in Shamaim that you don't belong there? Mm-hmm. Have you, Have you taken, taken time, time out to look at this? Because, because heaven, heaven records, records everything that is happening here on earth. Mm -hmm. As, As it is here, so, so will it be. In other words, if you are righteous, righteous here on earth, earth that, is, that is, if you, you keep, keep all of Yahuwah, what, what is the whole duty of man? It's to fear Yahuwah and to what? To keep all his commandments. And those who are able to do that are what? Are those that are what? Reckoned and taken into what? Into Shamaim. So if you're so not, if you're keeping, not keeping this very commandment, the one that it says here that it's a joy. joy. Mm -hmm. To the most high. It's a it's joy to the, the most high. high. Listen <laughs> to this. We say we want to please Yahuwah, and you heard this is a joy unto the most high. And yet you're not keeping it. Are you trying to please the Father? That already says that we do not have a munah, we do not have faith. Because without faith, there's what? Impossible. So, so how, how can, can you bring, bring joy, joy to the to most high when you do not do the very same things that, that give him joy? joy? And how can you say you love him with all your heart, mind, and soul if you're not, you're not doing what pleases him? So, who is, so a, who liar? is a liar? As one John, John says, says, who is a liar? Anyone, anyone who keepeth not, not the commandments of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. If you say you know him, if you say you know him, you do not keep his commandments. It says, you were it says you were a liar. So now, so now, as we are, introspe as we are introspecting, that's what that's what this Shabbat, Shabbat, is, Shabbat all is all about. As we, as are, we are introspecting, introspecting and reflecting on this word that the eye is bringing, bringing. Can, you see can you see where you stand, stand if you're not keeping this word? Is it Brother Shamo telling you that the word does not love you? Or is it the word saying it? Because the word says, I have no covenant with what? Those who do not keep my commandments. It's in the Deuteronomy. You can go on act. 29. For this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tablets concerning Yashara, that they shall celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles seven days with joy. And it says, in the seventh month, acceptable before Yahuwah, a statute forever throughout their generations every year. Do you see that? That's clear. Next, Next verse. verse. And to and this, there, there is, is no, no limit of days. days. So it's not going to expire 2022. <laughs> so that, so that means, means what we read there, there in uh, Numbers, numbers. Yeah. It's, quite it's quite serious. serious. It, it still stands. stands. That's, That's so utterly what? what? Be cut, off. Be cut off. off. That's a piercing word in my heart. I don't know about anyone who's listening and watching. Mm -hmm. That is a piercing word. Look, Look at the at danger, danger that we stand defiling Yahuwah's word. Mm -hmm. Defiling Yahuwah's word. He says, and to this there is no limit of days, for it is ordained forever regarding Yashara that 
that they should celebrate it. Dwell in booth and set wreath upon your heads. Wreath, sorry. And take leafy boughs and willows from the brook. And what? And willows from the brook. <laughs> That's why the most I said mm. told us to come at this season. He wanted us to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in the land of Willows. Wow. I can tell you that, can tell you that that's why many of our people are not celebrating it. Because this, this was the instruction to celebrate it here. Yes. yes. That's where the Willow came in. I, I, I haven't seen, I didn't see this one. Leafy bows and willows from the brook. <laughs> and and not to think that we're making this up. Everywhere we are, we're surrounded by willows. Yeah. All right? Everywhere. Look, look. this is not made up. You see, Abraham didn't understand the full picture when Yahweh said to him to leave his father's house. But his decision to obey, his faith to obey Yah, along the line, what he what understand him. So Psalm 111 is actually true, verse 10. It says what the fear of Yahweh is what? Beginning of wisdom. the beginning of wisdom. <coughs> a good understanding of who? All they. All they that keep his commandments. Again, back to what? The commandments. So if you have heed the call to flee, and many things you flee for us, many things they flee for us, and you are not fleeing for me. Did I flee for any one of us? It's for your own soul. Your own soul. Yahuwah says, your own soul. Come out of there, my people. Be not cut off again. Your own soul. So look at how the scriptures are aligning. Just by the act of obedience. And what you're saying is very true. Many are not keeping it because what? Because they haven't presented, presented themselves, themselves worthy. In honoring the word of God. Yeah, when, when it, it came. came. To say, I'm, I'm fleeing. Mm-hmm. Harden their heart. As in the days of... And, and who is it talking about? The same Yashara. The same children. All right. Now we can stop there. So, <clears throat> this cut-off thing is also in the New Testament. Don't want us to say it's an Old Testament thing, so we always like to go to the New Testament version. Romans 11, 19. Are we on YouTube? Anyone? Has anyone checked YouTube to see today? Not on YouTube? Hello. Yeah? You sure? All right. What are you telling me? Let me try to get it. Let me try to get it. Again. <laughs> it's on. This is live. Stop live stream. Let me go to YouTube and show you. All right, we're just checking if we are live on YouTube. Um, live stream. Um, I don't see it. So probably have to it's being recorded, so I just I, I just upload it. All right, so where were we? Yeah, the New Testament, Romans um eleven. <coughs> what did I say? Eleven nineteen to twenty three. Yeah, yeah, read please. Go ahead. That would that say that the branches were branches broken, broken off, off, that I might, might be grafted, grafted in. in. Well, well, 
because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith be not high minded but fear for if Allah spared not the natural branches take heed lest he also spare not thee continue Behold, Behold therefore the goodness, the goodness and, and severity, severity of Allah, Allah. on them, them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, goodness if thou continue, continue in his goodness, goodness. otherwise thou, thou also shalt, shalt be cut off. off. Cut off. This is for the Gentiles, grafted, grafted in and boasting on the Gentiles. Gentiles. They can also be cut off. Well, and our people, people, of course, have been cut off because we are under the curses. And, and we, we can, can be grafted, grafted in again. again. And if we are grafted in and we fool ourselves, the most high will cut, cut us off yeah. again. So the most high is a cutter. Yeah. 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 Verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Allah is able to graft them in again. Yeah, so that's it. That's it. That's the process. Gentiles grafted in. They don't, don't stand, stand in, in Emana, cut, cut off again. Yashar al cut off. They repent, stand in Emana, then they are grafted in. They lose Emana, they are cut off. All right? So, what we see happening as we are speaking about now, people not keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, people not responding to the word of the Most High. There are a lot of people he, here um, who do, do not, not know Yahuwah. And, and so they actually, actually tempt Yahuwah because, because they, they have this overconfidence that, that no matter, matter what they do, do Yahuwah is not going to cut them off. Yeah. No, no matter, matter what they do, do Yahuwah is going to always be there for them. Um, right? <clears> and, and that, that is called tempting Yahuwah. Tempting Yahuwah. I've heard it so many times when people hear hard words that make you fear Yahuwah. They don't sit uncomfortable. I don't mean anything to them. Because their confidence is, it might happen to you, but not with me. I have a relationship with Yahuwah. It's not going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Matthew 4. Five to seven. Ma Matthew four, verse five to eleven. Oh, to seven. Sorry. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the son of Alua, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Take it up. He's seven. Oh, sorry. Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt Yahuwah thy Alwa. So, so the, the great, great Hamashiach. Hamashiach. The great Hamashiach. Could have, have tempted, tempted Yahuwah. And, and he said, said no. Thou shalt, shalt not tempt Yahuwah. And, and we today are tempting the Most High by rebelling against His commands. Because many of us don't keep the Feast of Tabernacles and we opt not to keep it. And then we come back and we continue trying to fall in line as it was before. And that Deuteronomy 6 16 is where Hamashiach got this from. Deuteronomy 6, 16. He shall not tempt Yahuwah your Alua as he tempted him in Massa. And it's the same thing for us today. And in the book of Exodus 17, we have an example of the children of Yahshua doing the same thing, tempting Yahuwah. Yeah. So, yeah. So what 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 does tempting look like? That's like daring Yahuwah. Yeah. And how do you dare Yahuwah? 
when you know something he has said example it says flee out of the midst of where babylon, babylon. all right so that you do not what partake in her what iniquity now guess what many people are doing sitting in babylon saying what yahuwah will come and save me here. yes 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 are you seeing that yes this is them then yahuwah yes but look at the instruction yes we know yahuwah is capable of everything and anything but listen to the word that proceeds from the mouth of the holy alua he says come out of her flee from the midst of babylon so that you do not be cut off, off in her iniquity and you say no i'm gonna stay here and before this danger or whatever thing is bound to happen happens yahuwah will deliver me that is tempting yahuwah yes this is one of the most dangerous thing anyone now if yahusha did not try that with yahuwah mm -hmm. who are you yep who am i who are we yep to decide to take him up on such a thing yes all right <laughs> <laughs> oh boy exodus 17 1 go please and now the congregation of the children of Yasher are journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Uh -huh. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moshe said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt Yahuwah? All right, so here is the temptation now. They were thirsty. There was no water for the people to drink. So you would think that this is a necessity. Water is a necessity. But when the people said, give us water that we may drink, it is counted as us tempting. The most high. The most high. Can you imagine that? So easy, we tempt the most high. And when the most high tells us to move, we sit back and say, no, we'll stay. Right? Mm. That is tempting the most high to the utmost. And and it really shows that we do not know Yahuwah. Mm. I mean, clearly, it shows that we do not know Yahuwah. We have no clue. Even the children of Yahshua are here. Mm. Because listen to what Moshe is telling them. You are not doing it to me. You are tempting Yahuwah. In mm -hmm. other words, Please refrain from this. Why? Because Moshe knows something, something that people do not know. That in the Amema, Yahuwah does what? Yes. Yahuwah was already here. The yes. moment the word yeah. sees from your mouth, Yahuwah was already here. <coughs> now you must pray and ask for forgiveness before his word, his judgment comes. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. No, no this tempting, tempting thing is so serious. Then we're going to see a case, even when the Most High asked someone to do something, the person said, rejected from doing it because I don't want to tempt Yahuwah. Hmm. Isaiah 7 verse 10 to 12. Moreover, Yahuwah spake unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of Yahuwah thy Alwa. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. <laughs> Neither will I tempt <laughs> Yahuwah. You see? It is so serious. That even when he's given the option to do it, he says, no, I'm not going to do it. That's serious. And guess where it's coming from? Hmm. Somebody around him mm -hmm. is causing him to go tempt Yahuwah. Yeah. And it's the same thing now. No, it's Yahuwah. Ask him to do it. More of a Yahuwah speak unto him saying, ask, ask the sign. And ask, oh, ask it either yeah. in the depths or in the height of our I think he spoke through Isaiah. Isaiah, yes. Yeah. 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 So, that's, that's how serious, serious it is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, in order to not be cut off, you have to trust in the most high and obey his word. Psalm 31, 19. Psalm 31, 19. 
Oh, please. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, <coughs> which thou hast wrought for them that trust in, in thee before the sons of men. No, stop there. His goodness is for who? Those that fear him, number one. And number two, those that trust in them before the sons of men. Mm. Thou shalt hide them in the, in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. So who will he keep? Those who fear him and those who trust in him before the eyes of, before the sons of men. These are those who he will hide in the secret of his presence from the pride of man. Mm. 21. Bless be Yahuwah, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Continue. Roll up. Oh. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. Okay. Oh, love Yahuwah, all ye his saints, for Yahuwah preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope. In All right, so this is encouragement here for those who hope in Yahuwah. David here thought he was cut off, but he said he made supplication unto the Most High. And Yahuwah heard his voice. And that is what we encourage everyone who is listening this today. Repentance is there before judgment. Those who have heard his commandment, Repent and make supplication unto the Most High. All right? Because it's the evildoers who shall be cut off. Psalm 37, 7 to 11. And if you fall in the ranks of the evildoers, because the Most High sees evil, the Most High sees evil in some simple places, things that we take as being just error, the Most High sees them as being evil. Verse 7. Rest in Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Continue. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. All right. So the evil doers shall be cut off. And we were reading Numbers 13 and 14 this morning, and we saw that the Most High referred to those who murmured as evildoers. So if we're even murmuring, grumbling, complaining, the Most High sees us as being evildoers. So we have to repent. That is the key to repent. All right? Yeah. So, it says, it speaks about the evil doers and it speaks about the righteous. And we have to underline how we are declared our phone to be righteous. Philippians 3, verse 9. We have to state how we are found to be righteous. Read this. Philippians 3 verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Hamashiach, the righteousness which is of Alua, by faith. By 
Emunah. Righteousness, righteousness by Emunah. Righteousness by what they call faith. That, that is how we are declared righteous. righteous. And <coughs> Emunah, or faith, is an action word. It means believing, which leads us to take action. So when the Most High speaks, we have to be willing to respond immediately, right away. That is Emunah. And, and if, if we, we do, do not respond, respond, it means we do not have Emunah. And it says without Emunah, it is impossible to please Him. So, so no matter what we do, no matter what we think, as long as we don't respond to the word of the Most High, then we are not righteous before His eyes. All right, it's going to be a relatively short presentation today because we just want to make it clear to most, most people, people these errors, errors to, to, so, so that, that it can help us to overcome. overcome. Because, because in the book of Amos, Amos it prophesied of a time, time of sifting. And this is what is happening on the world today. today. This, this is, we are in ex the exact same timeline as the book of Amos, Amos verse, Amos, Amos chapter 9. nine verses 8 to 15. This is what we're talking about right now. Read, please. Behold, the eyes of Yahuwah are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Yaakov, saith Yahuwah. His eyes is upon the sinful kingdom. What kingdom was that? Judah. Judah. Yeah. Verse, Verse 9. nine. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Yasharal among all nations, like as a corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. For lo, I will command. I will command, and I will sift the house of Yasharal among all nations. That's us today, scattered all over the world. He's going to sift. Us. us and, and he, he says, says as, as God is sifted yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth the least grain are those who are going to be the remnant who are going to be chosen the least yeah the least grain will not fall but the greatest grain will fall because verse 10 says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say because the evil shall not verse 10 says, not prevent us look at that, look at that verse all, All the sinners, sinners of my people, people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. These are the people today who are comfortable in Babylon. In Babylon. Flee from Babylon. No. Um, he's going to protect us where we are. These are those that he's talking about. The people who say they are going to remain and refuse to move. Yeah. And the time that this is going to happen is just before Hamashiach comes back because, because verse, verse 11, 11 says in that day will i raise up the tabernacle of david that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and i will raise up his ruins and i will build it as in the days of old see that's it this is the return of hamashiach so right before hamashiach returns there's going to be a sifting and that's what we're seeing today so in other words yahuwah these are the final seal. This is the final seal. He says, I will close up the breaches. Yeah. yeah. So if you are not entering this thing now, then a time will come that as if it hasn't passed, probably still going on, that you are going to be cut off. Because once he closes up these breaches, the way are you going to penetrate? Yeah. Now you're going to enter. So once it's sealed up the breaches thereof, it says, and I will raise up his ruins. In other words, you'll be out there yeah. in outer darkness. Remember what Revelation speaks about? It says that the children will be, what, will be cast out. Matthew, I think he also mentions that. Mm -hmm. The children will be cast out into outer darkness. So if you are not within these the borders, the boundaries, the breaches here, before they are totally sealed, this is what's going to be happening to you. You'll be in outer darkness where there's utter destruction. Yep. 
Go, go, to, go to verse 14. Verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Yasharal, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruits of them. So this is a process that is taking place today. He's bringing back the captivity of his people, returning them to their own land and to their own borders. Verse 15. And I will plant them upon their land. They shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith Yahuwah thy Alua. Okay. And um, as we said earlier, we are righteous through Emanah by faith. And it is the righteous that shall inherit the land, those who have Emanah. Psalm 37, 25. Read, Read please. please. All right. I have been, I have young, been young, and I am old, and I am, and I am old, and now I am old. Yet, yet have I, I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So, this this is uh, this has been our experience again over the past few weeks, when we are calling people to move. People want to go, and um. Prepare themselves. Prepare, Prepare themselves, themselves financially. Everybody, everybody delaying, delaying themselves because of finances. Nobody says they mustn't prepare financially, financially but delaying yourself and not coming because, because you, you cannot, cannot calculate, calculate the finances. It, it, it sounds like you are being apologetic. Please rephrase that again. <laughs> Please don't be apologetic about it. They are being held back because of materialism. Yes. <laughs> And that, and that is, is showing, that, that is, is equally showing yourself to, yeah, to disprove and disobey his word, which it says, do, do not, not love, love the world, nor what? Things of the world. No, the things that are in the world. It says, friendship with the world is what? Enmity. So, so tell me how your excuse is going to be good, telling me that, oh, I was waiting for my house to be sold. Oh, I was waiting for me to sell a car. Oh, I was, this is why the distraction caught me. This is why I missed the bus. Yeah. And just and last week, last Yahuwah week, gave me a dream, and it was, and it was similar, similar when we were sharing, sharing back at home. It, it was similar. similar. When, when the past, we missed the Mashiach. Yeah. We missed the Mashiach. And the moment we missed the Mashiach, and where we were supposed to be, in the land that we were supposed to meet him, the wickedness that began being propelled on the earth, you have no you have no clue. Everybody, everybody, everybody now was was, was untrusting of, of each other. Everyone was everyone killing and shooting. Look, if you come to me, I shoot you because I don't know you. I shoot you because it was just wicked. It was almost as if wicked. It was almost as the ruach was lifted off. The ruach was lifted off. So there was no more compassion. No more compassion. Every man was wicked. Every man was wicked. Wicked. It was just. It was just chaotic. And this exactly where exactly where it's going now. What we are looking. We are looking. And, and, and what, what words more can be shared here, here encouraging you to just trust and have him and, and just keep to his word? <coughs> this is not a sales speech, a uh, pitch, sorry. This is out of love that we, want, that we convey this word to tell you the truth, that nothing is worth missing this. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I, have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor is he begging bread. So maybe, maybe, maybe people need to hear the testimony of those that are here, who also <laughs> shared in the same sentiments. Mm. That man, when we get it, what are we? How are we gonna survive? What, yep. what, what are we gonna eat? Yep. What clothes are we gonna wear? Please, are we all not wearing clothes here and eating every day? Yeah. Eating more than we possibly can. Please, just look around. Yeah. I mean, the feast we are having, kings don't even have such feasts. <laughs> yeah. Oxtail. I mean, you think about it. Oxtail, lamb. Lambs, like eh, mutton. Just okay. The, the, wow. Wow. <laughs> All the things that seem to have been a border, once we made the transition because we trusted Yahuwah, guess what? 
He made the provision. He sustains. So, I'm, I mean, we're encouraging you. Let not this be a burden unto you. The cares of the world. The cares. Of, remember, the last seed that was choked was because of the cares of the world. Worrying. Oh, this. Oh, all these things are passing away. They are not going to matter in the long run. All the monies in the bank accounts are not going to matter. Because you are willing next year, you are, if you haven't heard, they are taking this thing digital. And you can be cancelled that your money will really not mean anything at some point. So why are we worrying about this? All right. Um, 26. Let me get it. Um, he is ever merciful. Verse 26. All right. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is Barak. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Continue. For Yahuwah loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Yahuwah forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever. We need to crank up the Emona some more. When we hear these words, we're supposed to be, you know, just carefree. Because this is how I live. Carefree. I don't care. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next minute, next to next week. Nothing. Just live according to the most high. As long as Yahweh has spoken it, I'm fine. Yes. He's giving me the assurance. So if I go and, he's, and I'm struggling, I'm hungry, then I know who to blame. Yahuwah. Then he's a liar, isn't it? Yeah. And he cannot lie. He cannot lie. So the cranking up of your faith means that looking at these promises and making a bold, a bold decision say, I'm going to trust in what is happening. Let me just do it. Yep. Verse 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Hey. Who shall inherit the land? Righteous. So how are we counted as righteous? Hmm. Revelations 14, 12. No. <laughs> what if, how are we counted as righteous? To him and out. To him and faith. It is impossible to please him without faith. So yes. only those who take action will be counted as righteous. Yes. Only those who take action shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. This is actually the Revelations 14, 12. Yeah. yeah, the patience of the saints. They that keep the his commandments, commandments and their faith. Yes, let's go there. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. that it's right there. With, without yeah. faith, Yahushua would have never hanged himself on that stage. That's, That's it, it Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep his commandments, keep the commandments of Alua and the faith of Yahusha. Yeah. So it takes the faith of Yahusha to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if you want to know how Yahusha did it, it took Ebuna absolute compliance and trust in what? In the word of Yahuwah. In Torah. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. All right. So let's go to. The Most High is calling us, but he won't call forever. Because that's just how he is. Um, Psalm 81, I think. Psalm 81, 11. As we said, it's a time of sifting, and we have to be conscious. In this time of sifting, and we have to be conscious today that the most is sifting. We might not notice it or might not know it. We have to be conscious in our actions to know that he is um, sifting us. Yeah, that he is actually sifting us. So, Psalm 81. Verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice, 
And Yasharan would none of me. Ah, so if we don't harden to his voice, if we harden our hearts, as in the provocation, let's see what he's going to do. Verse 12. So I gave them up unto their own hearts last, and they walked in their own counsels. So whatever. This is what you have to be cognizant of. Whatever. If we do not hear his voice or listen to his voice, what? Ever we choose to be the truth, he is going to make it look like the truth. Whatever we choose to be right, he's going to make it look like it's right. And you're going to be fooled. We are going to be deceived. <coughs> Think we are right, you're wrong. This is just in our mind. Verse 12. Verse 12. Am I there? Yeah. Verse 12. So I gave them up unto their own hearts last, and they walked in their own counsels. Yeah. Very, very important, you know. Very, very important. So, in this time of sifting, when we are being sifted, oh boy. The bomb out. You are now the host. All right, yeah. I am still network problems, all right? Um, just, just a few, just a few seconds. Um, we should be back again. Isn't it? With the power button. Yeah. This connected directly to the power. Okay, there we go. Oh no, still not on. Let me try to hold on. And how's the sound now? Which one of them is it? Man? I say Huawei one, two, and three. So oh, we are connected. This one is big on oh, this one is Yes. All right, so you're ready. You want to see some Yes. Yeah, I see a six to six, two to four. Go ahead. All those things of mine hand made. No, no, start from one. Thus says Yahweh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, says Yahuwah. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. And tremble, trembleth at my word. So those people who are tempting the Most High, when the Most High speaks, um, we say, okay, 
uh, you know, as if it's not for me. Yeah, the most I has my back. The most I will take care of me. He will this and he will that. The most I says, flee. No, I'll stay. He can take care of me everywhere. Wherever I am. Yeah? That is tempting the most I. But the most I says, that's not the person we look to. It is a person who is poor of a contrite rock and trembleth at his word. Does it have a poor in spirit? Yeah. Continue. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. The part where we say we go about offering animal sacrifices, yes, we are measuring this now. Yeah. Now the broken and the contrite spirit and the oh, yes. spirit that's yes. Oh yes, this confirms it. Wow. Without the contrite spirit, whatever you're doing is evil to him. Yeah. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea. They have chosen their own ways, and they are do, and they are so delighted in, in their, their abominations. In their abominations. So, so if we are not in line with His word, He says we have chosen our own way, and therefore, no matter what we offer to Him, He rejects it. No matter what we offer, as long as you choose your own way. In other words, if you sit in Babylon and Man, I'm part of an assembly. Exactly. It's filthy before Yahuwah. Yeah. Let me emphasize this again. In other words, if you are sitting in rebellion, right? If you're sitting in Babylon, Babylon sitting in Babylon now in these days means rebellion. And you think I'm praying to Yahuwah, and you think I'm a man of Yah, I'm a woman of Yah. Look at it. You are an abomination. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that which that in which I delighted not. Yeah, yeah so, so he will choose the deception that we follow. So we are going to sit there pretty. I'm okay. Yeah, you can go along. I'm okay. Most I will take care of me. Wow. It will be a deception to us. We will so believe it. No one can tell us anything at all. This doesn't look good. In other words, our words we've been reciting. Oh, yeah, what will save me here? That's a strong delusion. Yeah. In other words, the teachers who are affirming our, our rebellion, say, stay in Babylon, are the strong delusions that Yash has sent onto us. Yeah. Yes. So if you're following any teacher out there who's giving any word contrary to this, other than turning and showing you your sins, your error, to turn you away from your captivity is actually a false teacher and you are following what? The teachers that you have given onto your own heart. This is Yahuwah saying this to you. This is not, it, it has nothing, it, it just has nothing to do with me. I'm insignificant. But it's like it's also very insignificant in all of this. This is all Yah's doing. He says, I will gather my people, what, in these times. I will set my hand for the second time and do what? And gather the remnant of what? Of where? Of who? Of the house of Jacob. Into their borders again. <coughs> and then you are sitting there and you are praying and you are tempting the what? Every day while you are born. <coughs> Look at what we are playing with. So should you be cut off? Should you die where you are now? And you find yourself in the in the absence, not in the presence, but out of Yah's presence. What would you say? What excuses will be good? Oh, because of my children. Oh, because of my husband. Oh, because of my wife. Would that be a good excuse? When Yahusha says, if any man loveth who? Father, mother, mother. who else? Brothers, sisters, wives, all these people. Look, when, than look, me. look at this. Because the warning was was long issued. It's not it wasn't issued now. So that you say that oh it just came up now. 
Luke 14. Luke 14, 25 to 26. 26. Oh, you're not on? Yeah, just now. Are you on? Yeah. And that looks, look, that's Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, Yah is saying that if you choose your word over the word I'm giving you, then what's, this is what happens to you. You are not worthy. Brother, yeah. Sorry, brother. Someone so, is not audible. It's so too when, far. When Yahu what is oh, Pedro saying something? Brother Shamwell. Pedro, you're saying so something. Far. We can't hear you. Let me get. Brother Shamwell is not audible. It's too far. Oh, okay. All right, you gotta come. So. Sure. All right. I'm here. Yeah, it's much better now. Can okay. hear. Okay. So, this is what Yahuwah is saying. In these times, Yahuwah has already given. A word of prophecy through Yahusha way back in the time for us telling us that if any one of us love mother father anyone we love over him we are not worthy of the kingdom why is Yah saying that he's saying that because in these times he knows the difficulties that will arise because when he sends forth his word for redemption for to rescue his people guess what many will be slowed down by the sentiments of family friends um possessions, materialism, all these things. So he gives us all the clue. He says, if any man loves anything in this world, does not love me. If any man loves family over me, it's not worthy. Why? Because they are going to be a limiting factor. Do you know why many people are, not, are failing to move in these times? And especially look at the danger of the previous scripture we read, the oblation, is that something like that, where Yahuwah says that when he gives his word, he loves them that just receive it and act upon it. Not those who take it and go and deliberate. Hey, Brother Kazak, what do you think about what Yahuwah is saying? Do you think Yahuwah is right? Like, is he really serious that we should move? <laughs> These are not the kind of people Yah is looking for. And brothers and sisters, I want us to have that fear. You know, whenever Yahuwah re redeems something to us, he reveals something to us, it's for the purpose of redemption. So that we can act right. We can what? Act right so that we can be restored. This is not a bashing festival. This is not the word that in these times we ought to be playing with. Our lives are in danger. Our lives are in danger. Every man flee for what? His own soul. Mm -hmm. So Yah has already given the word. He says, if you love, you are being, you are being held back by the, and Yahushua gave the parable. The last parable he gave says, these were those who were what? Choked because of the cares of the world. What does the cares of the world entail? Family. Mm -hmm. Money, possessions, house, house, cars, this. And I'm a loving brother, and I'm just trying to tell you because you know it's become such a bad. It's because we love you. It's not because hey, it feels good to be telling you these things. The more we hear the word and we do not act on it, it becomes what it it just becomes passive. You become familiar with it. It sounds like ugh, and the time will come. It will sound like we are disturbing you. Because family, familiarity breeds what? Contempt. So that's what is happening. You want to see the power in Yah's word? Do all it takes to obey it. Shalom. Yeah. There. This is actually... This has actually become a burden to us all. I want to apologize for the poor video. But we are out in the dark and just um, striving to get the word through. All right? We just need to look at um, how many people are in the, are on today to get to know that um, this has become a burden to many people. But um, who has an ear to hear, let them here all right so we are in the season of sifting and uh, please do not be on the wrong side of the sifting all right we continue to strive to encourage others to make the right decision but we know that 
people cannot be forced because if they are forced, then they will most likely become murmurers, evildoers according to Numbers 13 and 14. And we would advise you to read Numbers 13 verses 25 to the end and then Numbers 14 to get an understanding of what has happened before and what will happen again. What happened before was that the children of Yasharal murmured and they brought a bad report and they murmured and rebelled against the word of the Most High and lacking Emunah, the Most High was angry with them and he judged them that they would not enter the land because of their lack of Emunah and then when the Most High judged them, they turned around and were repentant and tried to make the wrong right, but the Most High was not with them. And this is what we fear with what is happening now, that it will reach a time, we are at the time of peace and safety, before the time of sudden destruction and we fear that when the time of sudden destruction comes that's when people now will want to try to start moving and we fear that the most time might not be with them at that time because we know that he does not change the same way he did things back in the days of the exodus it's the same way he's going to do things today all right so we just want to encourage people to Strengthen your Emanah because without Emanah, it's impossible to please him. And without Emanah, we would not be able to do the right thing. All right, strengthen your Emanah and remove the stumbling blocks of your iniquity from before your faces. All right. So this is Kazakh Aliyahu Yasharal on behalf of the rest of the people here in South Africa. want to say Shalom. No. Ziona, I'm going to call you, okay? Yes, Daddy. All right. All right, Shalom. Yes, yes. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. El Pedro. Shalom, Shalom, big brother. Shalom and everyone there. Shalom Aleichem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all is well. Okay. Still. still on YouTube. It's still on YouTube, Ziona. Yes, Daddy. Okay. All right. So I thought it wasn't on. All right. There are no questions there. You checked. No, lady, you. I just recognize you are on YouTube. Okay. All right. All right. So, shalom, everyone on YouTube. We didn't even realize that we were on. Ah, oh, Kelly said she didn't see anything. I don't know at all. Well, let's see.